no oh, now it's real oh now it's real i see i see people cascading in people are in yes i will let them drop in here trickle in hey look at that i see i see your co-host in there i see lynn in there That's hey cool. chris lynn Emmett. Oh, there yeah. he is marcus <laughs> haven't seen marcus in many years oh really oh yeah i i don't think i've i've ever met marcus in person that's like that's like ninety percent of the people I know. I feel like <laughs> yeah. I've only met, met met people virtually like this. In fact, I think that the first time I met you was in Long Beach when you came out for CSS uh, uh, conference way back when um, on, on the a Queen boat. Mary. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Conference on and, a boat uh, was um, pretty memorable and not memorable at the same time. Just thanks to beverages. I remember there was a giant octopus. There was a Yacht Rock band. Uh, I remember that. So I remember well, those parts. Very distinct. I heard the, I heard the stories the night after all that. What, what was it? The Blind Donkey that you went to? Uh, that was a Long Beach like, oh, like, we, like bar? We did end up in like a basement bar somewhere. Yep. <laughs> Blind Donkey. That's, bars, what's, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> basement bars are the best bars. Uh, everyone knows that. But um, oh, yeah. anyway, it was a... It was fun. It was really, uh, I don't know. That was a special event. You know, that was a very cool, like, I think, what was it? CSS dev conference, but that yeah. was a, just a very special event. Yeah. I thought so too. And, uh, just the fact that it was happening in my backyard, I was like, oh, this is phenomenal. I can just walk to the conference. Uh, that was something I don't think that has ever happened to me since. <laughs> um, that's, all, it, that's incredible. Oh yeah. That's just one of those, like, you know, luck, luck of the draw type things. Uh, but when 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 I did meet you, I I think we were walking to to a dinner uh, for uh -huh. you know, all the speakers one night. Um, uh, I don't know how 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 I got lumped it, into that group, but but you and I just kind of broke off the group and walked together a bit. And I had only known known you as like someone who's really good at code, and uh, you know, and just you know <laughs> followed you on Twitter and did all this stuff, and then. And then I learned a lot more about you as a person, you know, like the fact that, you know, you're fluent in Japanese. Uh, you, you Mama. Know, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but I just wanted to, like, give you a chance to, you know, to tell people about yourself a bit. Because, yeah, you know, you are known as, you know, this co-host of, of Shop Talk Show. Um, and uh, and you're you're now at Microsoft, which we'll talk a, um, a bit about. But you were part of a three-man team over at Paraville what what drives you you know um like like what like what do you do for work uh what do you do a little bit outside of work and uh what keeps you going Th those are going to be pretty similar stories uh <laughs> no uh origin story wise i've been making websites since i was like 14 or 15 and so this is like aol pages angel fire days like uh, and, and, you know, coming up on 30 years of making websites for fun. And so I, you know, took that knowledge and then I went to college and I had big aspirations. You know, I applied for the computer science program, got in, that was a miracle, uh, at university of Texas. And then I needed to pick a language at, at, for like credits, you know, and I had Spanish already. So I was like, I'm going to register for Spanish. And this is like, when you register on the phone, like this is how old I am, but I, I oh, yeah. I'm right there with you. Don't okay. worry. <laughs> so I call Tex, his name is Tex, and I go, you know, I'd like to say Spanish, whatever, 502 or whatever. And he's like, all oh, classes are full. And I was like, oh no, panic. Uh, so I just like on a coin flip, I said, I'm going to learn another language and it's either Chinese or Japanese, you know, like I'm just going for it. And so, and then I, I, I was like, I like, you know, I already kind of like know about Japan and anime and stuff like that. So I'm just going to choose Japanese. And then I, my brain rationalized it. Yep. We're going to go work for Nintendo. That's the plan. Uh, and I got into school and <laughs> got in and I made C's and D's in computer science and straight A's in Japanese. Oh, and job. I was like, maybe I should switch. So I ended up majoring in Japanese, which is a thing they let you do. I think that's, uh, maybe a scam, but whatever. <laughs> they let uh, dudes like me uh, major in Japanese. And then I went to Japan. I lived in Japan. I applied for the JET program, which is like you go teach and live there. And I did that for three years. 
lived in a remote village called Sasayama in Hyogo Prefecture. And I had a rice paddy in my backyard and a mountain in my front yard. And I taught at a junior high for three years. Uh, it was great. Uh, it was all fun. But then it was kind of just that time ended. It was like, I needed to go back to the States and kind of start life. You know, it sort of like felt like putting a pause button on my life there. So head back to the States um, and didn't really have skills. <laughs> no one wanted to hire me to speak Japanese, although I was pretty okay at it. But then, um, uh, so I just started making websites with Reagan Ray and Trent Walton, uh, my cohorts at uh, Paravel. And we just, uh, we, we started just making websites, you know, it was $300 and then it was $500 and then it was $3,000. You know, we just started building up and building up. And so, uh, and then Reagan and I worked at this like real estate company, making websites and the housing crash of 2007. We both like all of a sudden unemployed and homeless on the same day. So we had to figure that out. Uh, <laughs> and he went back to Austin and I went to LA, got married or started dating an indie rock drummer. That's cool. We got oh. married, came back to Austin, Paravel's in full swing. Uh, and we, we just built up, you know, a love for the web, you know, and it's always been, you know, I, I, my ethos or whatever. I was thinking about this recently. Somebody kind of posted like, why do you do it? You know? Um, and I think my thing is kind of like, I just want to make the web a better place. You know, you look at all the websites, there's a lot of bad ones, you know, yeah. and we can define bad That's many true. different ways, ad tech, you know, JavaScript frameworks, however you want to describe it. But uh, you know, to make it better, you know, and I think we did that with Paravel, you know, we were big into our pixel perfect layouts and we got kind of well known for that on dribble. <laughs> True. Yeah. Oh, I remember. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, especially art direction, you know, all that stuff, you know, yeah, lots of art back. direction yeah. spending way too much time to make a single web page. you know, we were just doing it. We loved it. And then, um, then, responsive hit right and and i was mad at ethan marcotte i was just kind of like that jerk ruined my life you know he he uh changed how we do things and so but and more more work right uh, more at, work at the but time, at the time it felt like it right we're building separate sites for you know mobile experience and this and that and uh and but, then how do you marry these like code bases yeah it was like I just figured out how to do this part well, the static part well, you know, and now I have to make it work on everything, you know? Yep. And I think I had like performance gripes, like, you know, we're going to send images that are too big and I still probably have those gripes, you know, but, um, uh, but like, like, cause a mobile site should be lean, but now I'm, it's just kind of like your website should be lean, you know? Um, cause every site's a mobile site now. Um, yeah. and then we, kind of just said, okay, fine. We we got convinced we had a big meeting or whatever, just like, well, let's go all in on responsive. Let's figure it out. And so we did uh, worked with uh, lots of different companies, but the big one was one Microsoft. Microsoft. Yeah. yeah. I remember yeah. that one. And, and now, you know, we're coming like full circle and it's even more full cir circle than that when it comes to your work with web components, but that what us, what a, you know, funny, like linear, uh, it, yeah. it almost looks it almost looks planned <laughs> in a sense <laughs> i wish it was more uh, i wish <laughs> there was more planning um but no it was you know it, i think it was like good I, I think like we you know we we did good work we worked on and off with them and a whole bunch of other places a large pizza company stuff like that and then um and then for like the last two years or so we had we took some funding for a startup that we built called Luro and it's an app. You can still sign up for it, LuroApp.com, but uh, it, it basically helps you roll out your design system across an organization. That's the whole goal of it and kind of tracking how they do, but not just how like the components do and where they live. We do that, but then, you know, what, what's the end product? What's the health of the product after that? Are you accessible? Are you performance? Stuff like that. So stuff we care about and stuff we saw in every company that we walked into Every, every time we got a new job. So, and all but, in one you know, place too, right? I mean, yeah, all I in one place. That, that's part yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the, the current tech economy, I don't know if uh, people are feeling this, but little, little icy, you know, so it was kind of hard to get uh, some funding to kind of continue development on it. So, had to get jobs. And so I, I, 
applied to a few places and then uh, eventually settled at, at a job at Microsoft. So, and I'm working on web components, which is cool because I did a web components course for front end masters and I've been into web components um, for a while, but now I, I get to write web components at Microsoft. So that's cool. That, that is very cool. And uh, now with, um, with Luro, I have I, I have a little suggestion. If you just you know slap a little sparkle emoji and just put some put some like AI language around there, boom, you'll get all the funding right there. Uh, you'll yeah, be, you'll be dead set. So <laughs> you know, uh, we, we tried it. <laughs> we we went into pitches and said, "We're AI, not, baby." Did, did and you? Still, did, people were people were just like, uh, "I don't get it," but that's fine. <laughs> I, there, there's you know I, I learned a lot about VC. I mean you know. You can, yeah. Our our bubble, right, is very much like, oh, those guys with the monocles are bad guys or whatever, you know. And and I, you know, to, to some extent, I think there are characters like that, you know. But um, but I I think there's uh, you know, I I think all the people I met were very good people, very smart people, very capable people. But I felt like the people who understood Luro the most were people who had product experience. Does that make sense? So I think there's a yes. In, in VC realm, there's people who have product <laughs> experience who have done it. And then there's people who have an MBA, you know? And so, uh, so it's a big difference, you know? So. Yeah. And now I want to go, go, go back, like way back. Like, do you, do you ever, uh, freak out when, when, when like people remember a tweet you wrote from like 15 years ago or something? Oh, I'm surprised, but go ahead. <laughs> no, uh, now, just, now I'm like sweating. What did I say? <laughs> well, it was pretty racist. No, um, no, uh, it yeah, was uh, no. <laughs> canceled. Uh, no, it was uh, like I don't know why, but uh, but this is just off the top of my head and remembering something like maybe around the time of 2011 or so. I just remember this really short tweet of yours. It was like achievement unlocked, <laughs> first web component, and it was it, it was like. It was just like an HTML5 audio player or something, just like something really, you know, low level, but it did the thing and you had a custom tag for it. And that was, you know, to me, pretty mind blowing at the time. And of course, just went right over my my blonde brain. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I thought that was pretty fascinating at the time. Now, I because we're going to probably talk a lot about web components um, in general, I want to know like, like, like walk me through you getting into web components as as like a web feature because you know you had enough interest to create this low level thing you know just to experiment with it it was achievement unlocked you know so what does that look like from there when 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 you have this like little aha moment yeah i mean so i think 2011 would have been pretty early cuz i think they really weren't available to like 2013 or something like that but um but i had started um I think it was like 2014 or 15 when we were working with a large pizza company. Um, you know, I, I'm building all these folders of files, right. And templates. And I think we were building in 11 or, uh, Jekyll or something at the time, um, or we ported it over, uh, you know, and I, and I have all these files, you know, and I'm building these and then, you know, they're like, well, cool. Uh, we have to now implement that in Java, you know? And, and I just was like, Oh, nuts. Cause that <laughs> translation isn't going to go well. I mean, I don't know, even like, you know, e even the best, uh, <laughs> I guess like even like a good developer or a good set of engineers or whatever, like you're going to lose something in translation going to the metal. I feel like, you know, cause, cause you're basically like taking something that's baked, very specific. And then you, port it over and maybe the templating language does things weird or doesn't have like a for loop index zero or something weird like that. Right. Yeah. So I just was like, man, it would be cool if for my clients and everybody, if I could just deliver a folder of files and be like, here you go, you know, like, so and, and that was kind of the dream, right? Like, it's just be like, here's a folder of files. These little bits are accessible. They're, they work, they're to brand, they're everything. You just pop them in and then you pick and choose and import them, you know, as you want. And so I like started like a whole, do you remember uh, Mark's stories uh, dive into HTML 
five or something like that. Yeah, it's you really know, old. Th- anyway. I I hadn't thought about it since probably the, <laughs> but the moment you said it, I'm like, oh yeah, that yeah. does ring. Is it really about. like quintessential HTML five era piece, right? Yeah, um, that's right. But I started like writing my own like dive into web components, you know, and at the time it was it was all HTML. Like you literally, your web component was an HTML file with a script tag, a style tag, and an H in just HTML. And so that's right. If that or a template tag inside with HTML inside, and if that sounds familiar, yeah, that's like the single file component that like all uh, frameworks use today. You know, it's like, yeah, <laughs> excuse me. Sorry. So like, that's like the single file component that everyone, you know, format that everyone uses to. Uh, other frameworks have kind of gone in and out of fashion, right? Yeah, yeah. But the whole thing was like you could just do link rel import whatever my button dot html, and Instead it was awesome. what you want when you want it, right? Yep, and it was awesome. And you know there was some like loading concerns, like it would load late and block the DOM because you're doing a like a style sheet almost, right? And so like right. the page can't lay out until it's there. I get that. That's fine. However, on December 14th, 2020, or sorry, 2014, Mozilla killed HTML imports in a blog post on their blog that said, we are not going to ever implement this. And Safari was very quick to be like, nope, we're not doing it either. And so they killed HTML imports. Am I bitter? Yeah, maybe. No, uh, no. Uh, you know, well, why would just I? Just to the exact day. I mean, it's, I mean, it's okay. <laughs> Who remembers that day? I mean, it's, it's just a day. But anyway, they uh, killed HTML imports as part of the specification for web components, which is kind of like four specifications, right? It's yeah. like, that's right. Um, it's it's the custom element, for like the flagship feature, like my dash button, right? That's the custom element feature. How you build a custom element, you have like a slot or, or sorry, you have a, a template element, right? And then there's this like slot element, how you like get other content into the template. But and then there's the shadow DOM, uh, which is like this encapsulation, the egg around your content. So like you want the outside stuff not to get in and the inside stuff not to get out. And that works for styles. That works for a script. And, you know, it's it can be a foot gun for styling, for sure. It's not, <laughs> especially when you're used to global control of everything. Like you're like, I, I am the boss of the page. And then all of a sudden you're not, you know, so it's uh, kind of the learning curve there. But then the HTML imports were the fourth, you know, uh, fourth leg on the stool, and then they got that got swept, right? And so then they, so Mozilla's argument was, we are working on ESM modules, which seems more needed, probably true. But then it, like, we think we'll know more about the problem after we implement this. Fair enough. Okay, so they <laughs> implemented that, and then. Uh, no one has come back around for HTML imports. There's this HTML module spec, but that's more about importing your your HTML into your JavaScript, which would benefit web components, but it's just a little bit different. So uh, now, is do you know of any other possible to like open discussions or or open issues that are that are pushing for that? Um, no, no, um, <laughs> not really. I mean. Uh, people try and then it very quickly turns into no we have html modules i'm but there's a there's a group called the web components community group this is really an awesome group of individuals i slightly participate there um but they what what a community group in the w3c sense of the term is we can't propose specs we can't like cuz th- there's like a legal barrier there like you have to be a whatever, a paid member and like sign forms about patents and blah, 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 right? What we can do is uh, say, this is a pain point and here's a proof of concept of how that would be fixed, you know? And some, some there's some browser engineers in that group and what as well. So they can like prototype things and, or, or give like a thumbs up, thumb down on the feasibility, right? So that's cool. But the uh, Web Components Community Group is a great place because you can kind of bring these issues up and kind of, uh, you know, talk about it. And so there's a few issues going on right now I can tell you about if you're interested, yeah. but oh, yeah, one is cross root ARIA. So there's a problem with yeah. Web Components where if I have my label up here and I have like an HTML label element and I have my dash input 
And inside my dash input, I have an input element, right? With whatever sparkles around it or whatever, however I wanted to do that, right? Please sparkles, lots of them. Sparkles, easiest way to get it. It's like an AI. It's got AI in it, you know? <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> so the, so in HTML, to associate that label with that input, you say label for my input, ID my input, right? And then your input, so in H web components, my input ID equals my input. That doesn't work. So <laughs> like that, that reference doesn't like pass through the shadow Dom into oh, the, yeah. So into the accessibility tree or whatever it needs to, to do. Yeah. Yeah. So that association gets broken and lost. And so you can't like, uh, uh, that cross root from the parent root to the shadow root uh, does not work. And so there's actually a proposal for this called reference target. And I think there is a intent to implement out possibly. So, and that was kind of incubated a lot in the uh, community group and stuff like that. So that's like priority one. There's another idea of um, custom element registries, I think is another big one, which might exist in some capacity, but what does that look basically look if like? you write my dash input and i write my dash input uh oh we have a name collision right yeah. so if you had a registry like jeff's components and dave's components you know and then it would be like okay i know who's my input i need to listen to does that make sense like yeah, it totally does i you know coming from like a wordpress land type thing i sort of see that as like two plugins with conflicting you know um you know extend names or whatever and it's like yeah, oh yeah we can't register both of these we have to choose one um right yeah. and so like you can dodge it by like you know not taking up a global namespace would be chill you know <laughs> not uh that, that would be chill um but then the, the second one would be like like this custom element registry so you can have different whatever groups of components and so that's maybe being, I think that's being worked on. Then there's two others like declarative custom elements. A lot of people are upset uh, that you have to use JavaScript to use custom elements. And I would agree because uh, there's this little part where you have to say custom elements define my element and point to a class, right? A JavaScript class. And that's, uh, people would rather just write HTML and be like, that's a that's it, right? So now we're back to writing HTML to make our web well, <laughs> that's radical no way <laughs> radical radical idea here. but um but then but i think the idea is you know that we want to do this way to make custom elements more declarative easier to write um and there's like probably an ssr story kind of tied in there that works a lot better so uh so that's one and then when i've kind of been uh advocating for but i don't no, I don't know what's going to happen, but is the open stylable uh, idea, which is just this idea of like, I think Chris Coyer had a blog post, but the, I know what I'm doing selector, you know, just could, could, uh, could I write global CSS and just say, no, really make the button purple, you know, like, like, how do I like, it, it, cause if you got like, I don't know, a Google map, you know, and it doesn't match your dark theme, you know, like you might want to like, just change the buttons yourself or something, you know? Yeah. Um, you so that's pierce through that, that, that want, shadow. Right. And yeah. Pierce through and, the shadow and, Dom, which is the coolest yeah, and, and dumbest thing we can say in web development. But yeah. <laughs> it is right. It's like, it's like, we can't take that out of the language now. It just sounds no. too great. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. part of who but we it are. It goes along with nothing else. <laughs> um, in in that same vein, you know, uh, style encapsulation and, and and script encapsulation are you know two of the you know like key selling points of web components. But we oftentimes what I hear folks say is like that's that's the defining feature that you know it's the shadow DOM, the shadow DOM only. But we don't talk about a light DOM um, on um, on top of that. Can you explain you know the difference between this like shadow DOM and this light DOM? Yeah. So. Um... So if we have my, my input's probably a really bad example, but my card, right? My card. And all it does is, is applies a border radius of six and a background white, you know, or whatever. Um, and padding, a little bit of padding. So you have my card and you have, uh, um, you have the inside of there, you might have an image element 
in a H1 or H3 or whatever and some text, you know. Uh, the stuff you write in between the the element is your light DOM. So if you wrote it, and light DOM's cool because if you wrote it, you can style it, you know. So that's cool. What happens in your typical like what I don't know W three C sanctioned web component is um, it that so those little slots is what they're now called because like you have the image slot the title slot and the description slot, those get passed to your template, right? Your shadow root template. So, so I make a template element and I clone it and then it says, okay, I add all my extra divs because you have to have extra divs, you know, just to make a website, but you then uh, take the title and you put the title here. I put the image on the top. I put the description on the bottom. Bingo, bingo. I, that's my shadow root template and i pass that light dom i've revealed it is the term that uh, dev tools use but i've revealed it in these certain sp special places that i that i set up there are web components that don't use shadow dom so you can just write a component and then you just your component will still do its like component life cycle but it's just going to modify the light dom that's inside of it so you could just say like, okay, my card gets, you know, the class of card and now the style applies or something like that. That would be kind of like a boring example. But, you know, if you think of like, a, I don't know, like, um, like, oh, we have to replace all these like URLs to the CDN URL or something like that, right? Like, so we have to like hijack this URL and spit out the CDN URL. You could do something like that to the image tag. You could, you know, if you had, uh, I don't know, maybe you add progressively enhanced features in there, you know, something like, uh, I'm like a slider that makes the image more darker or brighter i don't know like there's just yeah. sort of like you yeah, can. you can control that shadow dom you know sort of or you can choose to use shadow dom or light dom if you want uh i think most people in like production -y big situations are going to want that encapsulation to do this and do the shadow dom but you know there's i think there's situations even in in my work you know where it's kind of like ooh, would just straight up light dom be better here like like Maybe we don't mess with the shadow dom. I don't know. So it's kind of like a, I, I think that's uh, a good thing about web components is we're not, you know, it's kind of like, oh, you don't like it. Cool. <laughs> just, <laughs> you just got options. Something you know? else over here. Yeah. There's, there's more than one way to write a web component. There's more than, you know, uh, and that might yeah. be frustrating to people, but you know, and, and that it's oh. all about your progressive enhancement story too. You know, like, the Jeremy Keiths of the world are probably going to prefer a more light Dom flavored light Dom centric flavor of web components. You know, um, you know, me, uh, when I think about a web component, I'm kind of concerned about adoption and usage across an organization. So I don't want to like write my card and then make somebody like fill in 40 different HTML <laughs> elements correctly. You know, I'd rather them just say, yeah you know, use some props, like, you know, uh, appearance, you know, rounded or something like that. I don't know. So like, I, I'd rather have like that. And then like editors can kind of kick in and auto complete all that stuff too. So I think there's like definite benefits towards like that more strict component model. Um, but I think, you know, there's also like, um, th there's more than one way to write a web component. And I think sure. that's just how it is. Well, I saw one, one example you talked about where we can, you know, I mean, we can dangerously select inner HTML, right? Hey, you know, and and just establish a template right in there. You know, just say, hey, just inject it in there. And d does that essentially become a like a shadow DOM element um, if it's being injected by the JavaScript since we didn't write it in between the tags there? Um, yeah. So you you can inject HTML in there if you know if you it, it's sort of where do you inject it? Are you injecting it into the host like the the element, or are you injecting it into the shadow root, you know, and there's this weird thing about shadow roots that can be closed or open. Um, so you can actually do that from the outside if you wanted to, like a whole other script could like modify these. Um, 
but yeah, I, I think it's usually just kind of like a, you know, you know, start with whatever, I don't know, whatever you're comfortable with, like write a component and then just try to like, you know, modify something how you'd usually do it and it'll probably work, you know, but achievement unlocked, right? You just, uh, achievement put it in... unlocked. yeah, that's right. If, and one it, achievement no. I'd like push people towards is yeah. use a web component. Like just yes. put a freaking web component on your page. Zach Lee has a whole bunch. Uh, David Darns has a whole bunch. Like go use one and then get a flavor for how they're being used. And then right. think about writing your own. So I think like right. developers are very quick to be like, I'm going to write it the best, you know? And it's oh, like, well, there's actually really good libraries out there like shoelace and things like that. Oh. And so, that's yeah. another point you've you've made though, which is which is you know like web components aren't diametrically opposed to frameworks or libraries. You can you can still work with these together, but it's like like an early. I I think you you may have even called it like a early learning blunder. You know that these things can't you know co coexist in one place. But if you sprinkle like maybe just a few kilobytes of lit in there. Um, you can actually, you know, you get all the benefits of the state-driven type, you know, component. You get you get all these other added benefits, all for just a few kilobytes, and not having to like reach over for like React, you know, DOM or whatever else. Yeah, I mean that's like exactly right. I mean, like you, I, I think a lot of mistake people make is they're like, I'm gonna write web components. I only write vanilla, you know, and and I think it's really important to know. Uh, and this is going to be hard. So everyone, you know, uh, Brace, guard your heart on, here to your desk, yeah. hold on your desk. They weren't written for you. Like they were designed as low level primitives. Like, like, I don't know the, the example I think I used in my blog post was like the international date time format, you know, like right. if you use Intel spec before it's fine, but it's not fun. It's not like, wow, buddy, I'm, <laughs> I'm using Intel again, you know? Yeah. Intel dot number format. I, I love this, you know. Jeez. I think I think these abstractions, these and and that's what they're designed to have, these like thin abstractions, you know, like a, a lit is like seven kilobytes G zipped, you know, like or, or it, it's pretty thin and like it's just not gonna be as heavy uh operation wise as a React plus React DOM. Like it's just, you know, sure. I, I think there's a hundred something kilobytes of difference between the two. And so if you just want a little reactivity and a little more ergonomics in your development, these frameworks are good. And then I think there's like this question of like, what if I used one that used stencil or a Svelte web component that, you know, cause Svelte can output web components. And what if I use, you know, a, a lit component and oh, now I've got three libraries in there. And it's like, that's super true. That's a problem, but it's like a very small problem in the, grander javascript sense of it you know so um and then that, for me it's like the pathway from out of a lit component is very linear it's very like i just have to do it the dumb hard way with query selector instead of at click you know so sure. that's the big difference now, speaking of which there's a there's a question from philip here in the chat that is asking is cross shadow root query selector also a thing that's being discussed uh cross shadow root query selector is not being discussed uh but you can write your own um <laughs> it's not fun uh and there i think there's probably libraries on npm but basically you you have to make a tree walker that walks the dom walks the shadow dom of all the components and some will have a shadow root and that's open but if it's closed you can't get it but some will have a shadow root that's open and some will not so um if you look at um Playwright, um, which is like a automation e software, and I think also Puppeteer has it as well. But they they have a way to pierce the shadow DOM with like a query selector. They do like oh. I think Playwright does it by default. It'll like go and it just makes query selector walk everything. <laughs> I walk the shadow DOM. That's yeah, nice. that's why I was looking yeah. at him like that's great. That's funny. <laughs> um, but then um <laughs> but then you uh but I think Puppeteer has this Pierce slash my my selector and it it'll look for that. So um so there's some prior art you can look at too. But I think there's a there's a library out there on NPM, I'm sure, that pierces yeah. query selector. So and none of this 
you know precludes having to to use web components in a production environment right right like like this doesn't you know make it a, like too limiting a factor to make web components still a realistic thing which is why you're at the job that you're at now right um because is is this microsoft going all in on web components no 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 but it, but the you know i think um you know i i think one advantage of web components is they go to a lot of places, you know, and they're very light, like very performance minded kind of by default. Um, you know, Microsoft's a big company. Uh, you know, I don't know how much I can say, but it's not, it's not. <laughs> I'll it's sign not 30, in NDA if you really want me to. It's not 30 people. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot. It's like 200,000 people trying to make software. So, and among other things. So, um, you know, so I, I think you have a situation where like where web components are good at is they need to go to different places. Like they need to go to the marketing site. They need to go to the whatever Azure portal. I have no idea, but um, like, so in all those are written in a different tech stack. Not everything is just like slap some react on it. Boom. It's a problem solved. You know, like that's all, all often creates more problems, you know, um, or just like technical jumps, you know, and there's really, yeah. you know, there's a, I work on fluent web components. There's also a fluent react implementation as well of this design system or design language, I should say. Um, and so the react one's way more mature. It's like way more deep, but it's, it's also, you know, pretty tuned towards, you know, kind of the, uh, I don't know, office apps vibe, you know, so, so kind of big apps, you know, stuff like that. So, the web component stuff is just, you know, I, I think it's for teams that are kind of like, you know, and trying to slim down their their web situation. And there was a post over on the Edge blog about using web components for their uh, UI views inside Edge, and they they've seen a really awesome speed improvement, particularly on, um, uh, particularly on uh, older uh devices like you know six-year-old devices with two cores or some they have some yeah. metric there i you know I, microsoft's a big company not everyone's going to use web components but i think it's also like a um i think they they are seeing the vision of them and just how you can like pick them up and move them and one thing i work on fluent web components which are built with fast element which is like a competitor to lit if you want to think yeah. about compared to a lit element fast. I, I kind of dropped into work and I was kind of like, why are we using fast? Like <laughs> that's one, not a lot of people use, but, um, uh, but the more I dug in, there's like very specific reasons, just even like ergonomic, like, you know, the, um, but I can get into that, but there's, uh, the big one is, um, a lot of .NET stuff is written in the MVVM architecture model okay. view, view model. Uh, which is kind of like a, you have your database, I guess, your model and your view, and then you have a bridge there that kind of syncs those two up. Yeah. And I think my understanding is uh, that fast really supports that situation. There, there's a, like, they kind of like they're, they're part of fast is so that it works really well in that situation. So uh, just the way it handles updates and stuff like that. So there you go. I mean, so there's a reason that they built their own thing and that's totally cool, you know? So, and I think that's the the vision of web components is like, do you need something different? Awesome. Can you write seven kilobytes of JavaScript? <laughs> Great. Go for yeah. it. Go for it. <laughs> do it. No one's crying, you know? So. Oh, yeah. Now, now you mentioned specifically how your work is in line with a design language. Um, and that's that's another interesting use case for yes, web components. I think that there's this no, like holy grail, right? Oh, we have another talker. I don't know how that works. Uh, I'm not a Zoom, uh, you know, professional here. Not a Zoom pro <laughs> either. Yeah. I, I I still don't don't have my my certification. Uh, <laughs> but but you know, I think that there's this like holy grail of of like of like being able to you know use web components around a design system or does or like a component library. And then at the same time, there's been you know, some like talk, you know, bubbling b below the surface about, you know, this concept of a global design system, you know, something that like we could all ecumenically just like grab and pull from and then, you know, customize and turn into, you know, like something that's branded in our own and just use that as like the low level primitive for 
web uh, elements. That do you, now, how does that all work together? In a sense, like, 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 is that something that with Microsoft you're working directly with designers to figure out how design and development would interface in this sort of um, system? Yeah, yeah. Um, I work on design team, so a lot of designers. Um, you know, but it, it's you know there, you know, a lot of it is like tokens. You know, like you know trying to think of who does what um <laughs> like a good example like uh teams has purple buttons and right. you know uh edge has blue buttons how do you make I that work that. In, in the same <laughs> thing it's impossible but you know one thing you don't want to do is like button purple button blue you know maybe you want to do that but like what you probably want to do is just be like our primary brand color is this color and so uh, tokens are helping a lot of that sort of cascading, yep. you know, building out that, that system for other people. And so, um, so yeah, I, I think tokens are a big part of it. I think, you know, I, I think it's also, you know, you know, this is not, uh, <laughs> Microsoft's first attempt at design system. I don't know if that's a secret, but, um, you know, so <laughs> I, I think, I think there's a pretty good idea of what it takes to, you know, build Microsoft products. And so I think there's, you know, I, I think there's a lot of, um, you know, I think there's a lot of people who, who are able to, you know, kind of predict the future and like, we're going to need a, this, you know, a tabs control that does this or something vertical and horizontal, you know, something like that. So, um, so in that way, it's kind of nice working there because people, there's a lot of smart people, a lot, a lot, a lot of smart people. Uh, but then, kind of have a lot figured out already just through experience and number of years there and stuff like that. So very, very cool. So another Did I answer of... your question. I don't oh, know. If... Yeah. 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 Of course. Oh no, you didn't. I need you to go back over that and do a take two. We'll just uh, splice it in later. Um, what, uh, what I'm thinking is, um, is that you, um, another blog post from way back when uh, that might get you canceled um, is a, is one, uh, you know, you talked about delivering mini bootstraps for clients, right? This yeah. whole idea of like, yeah, you have these common components. Most sites need this sort of thing. Maybe we tailor it down to just the specific components. Are web components, you know, that sort of vision as well, like working towards this sort of thing where we can, you know, essentially create a component library of our own, you know, fairly, in a fairly rudimentary way. Yeah, I mean, you know, how, like, I think there is, like, this, you know, I, I think, you know, web components are, you know, if you think about Bootstrap, that's probably a good example, big Bootstrap. You know, if it was web components, it'd be pretty easy to be, like, Jumbo-Tron, and then you put your big image, your, you know, your background image, and then your title and your whatever, Jumbotron title, Jumbotron image, and you're done, right? So like that would be kind of a cool way to write uh, Bootstrap, you know, where you you actually don't mess with the CSS at all. You're just writing HTML that generates the boot the the Bootstrap. Um, you know, I, I think you're gonna want some utility classes in there probably to like shim and make things extra fancy and handle management requests. You know, I think you're gonna want a few things there. Um, but you know, I, I think like that's the vision is you just have this little bucket of files, like literally JavaScript files now, but you have a little bucket of files and you can copy that over and start a new project, you know, like that would be kind of the dream, you know? Um, oh, absolutely. I think there's like some, you know, you get a little, uh, you know, it can get like intertwined, like the presentation stuff, you know, and the, um, like the the um the presentational parts of a component and the sort of base functionality of and so you may have to tease that out and that can be kind of weird but because you're working in classes with web components you can just extend a class and say like this is the base tab control but it's got fancier stuff so we have a variant of it or something or we have yeah it shoots sparkles yeah. every time you you uh <laughs> change the tab it fires confetti you know like you can oh, make please you can make confetti tabs pretty easy so confetti tabs i think should definitely be that global design system no i got you i can do it yeah. thank you thank you i 
I need that. <laughs> no have. one's ever no one's ever written a component for me before. I like, like so thank you. That's a I'll, that's I'll, a I'll do that. That's a service <laughs> I could provide. People just need need the affection of a web component, like a custom web component for yeah, their weird right. need. I'd happily uh provide that service. So I just don't think my wife would really love me to send her a component that's like a, you know, a flower dash bouquet or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, look, it's cool, uh, right? Isn't that beautiful? She's like, uh, I would have preferred something real, but thanks. Uh <laughs> hooked up to the web no. audio API, and if you squeal, the flowers get bigger. <laughs> they don't squeal want it. it and, and then AI baked in. Uh, yeah. if, it, if if we have uh, now now uh, another thing you know while while we're talking about you know like dashed idents you know for or like dashed uh, element names uh, if, even though it's you know we know that there's this requirement of a dash it doesn't necessarily have to come in the middle of the of, of the name right it, like like it doesn't exactly have to be two words that are joined together is that correct um y yeah I mean it can. Yeah, like I think there's a hack or whatever where you can just say like dash p like dash paragraph and and it's like legit or something like yeah. that. I would why think why you would want to do that I don't know, but yeah, I I would I think Jim Nielsen found that out. But um That's right. I would probably say don't do that. <laughs> I don't know. You're just kind of breaking the contract of expectations that we all kind of generally have, you know. <laughs> um and then, you know, but you know, again, it's fun. Um, I wish you could use emoji. I don't think you can use emoji in the element, um, but that would be fun. So it it would be very descriptive, you know, and may, may even uh, help with some language barriers, maybe with uh, yeah with naming components. But it would probably be like really tedious when you're writing web components. Yeah, you know? <laughs> you're like tight, and then you're you like, okay, I got to copy the snowman. <laughs> yeah, and then I got to yeah put snowman yeah. in here, and then. Snowman dash tabs, so that'd be oh, gosh. Now, now changing gears just a little bit because I'm I'm always interested in this. Um, I've been a contractor for who knows how long. Um, and and you, you know, were part of your own three person agency. You know, partners in this deal, and now you've made the transition into a big, you know, global conglomerate here. Um, but it's like. Like, are there any things that have surprised you in that in, in in that transition that like that may not be as obvious? Like, oh well, duh, I'm going from a three person team to a, you know, thousands of people here. Uh, is there something more like like in the way that like work happens or the way that communication happens that that you've been surprised by? Yeah, I think there's two like big takeaways. You know, I, I went from two hundred two coworkers to two hundred thousand coworkers. You know, like it, it's a big difference. You know. Um, to the extent, like, I don't know, it's, I'll meet people at Microsoft, but I have no idea how we're connected. You know, they actually have like this little, um, you know, uh, org chart thing, you know, you can click on somebody's name and find the org chart and figure out how you guys are connected. But, um, uh, which is, is neat, but also feels like very transactional, but anyway, um, it's, uh, but the, it's almost, I, I describe it like Warcraft or, or Starcraft, you know, where like you you it's the big fog of war over the entire map and like you kind of know something's there you saw a blip on the map over there you know they're over there but you have no idea how to get to there whatever <laughs> so it's just this like um that's kind of been like the experience it's just a very big company and navigating that is very different um i think the other thing is you know um uh i guess there's two more things but the you know i i think it's been different because when you're running your own company, you're doing it all. Taxes, billing, invoicing, uh, all this, you know, biz generation, um, you know, you're making the thing, you're selling the thing, you're, you know, you're, you're doing a lot, you know, self-promoting is a big part of it too. You know, you're, you're doing a lot along the way. It's just, uh, a lot of work probably that no one tells you about. Yeah. And then, you know, I, th I think going to a big company, it's different because I, I can work on a little thing. I can work on one thing, like one component. I, I've been like making one component faster, you know, or, and I can, you know, like that was That's last week I fixed focus. a spinner component, you know, and like for a week, you know, uh, and that's okay. You know, that's the, that's the difference. You know, like if I did that in my consulting days, it'd be like, you did what you spend a whole week on one, 
thing that okay. seems like we're not gonna get finished you know and like yeah you know it, you're up against a deadline you know or i guess um you know contracts peter out you know in Paravello, we actually like had a pretty good culture of like just experimenting and prototyping and, and like goofing off, but always with the goal of like getting to somewhere great, you know? Um, but the, but, but I think the big difference is like, it's okay to work on like a tiny thing, you know, that that's, yeah. that's a big difference. So from being in a big that company. Is. Do you, do you find that monolithic at all? Like, you know, like, like going from being able to jump in between lots of different things with a wide range of like solutions to, or different challenges to things versus, oh, I'm just going to perfect this one thing. Yeah. Just really I mean, obsess over it. Is that like, do you find yourself feeling too like peg pegged that way? Uh, No, not really. I, you know, I, I think, Cause I'm on like a design system team. I think if I was on another team, it might be different, but with design systems, you're very used to like, okay, I'm thinking big picture. Oh, I'm thinking tiny picture. Oh, I'm thinking big picture, thinking tiny picture, you know, um, like, like, you know, you're zoomed out to the whole product, but then you're zoomed into the tiny component and then you're zoomed out to the whole product um, or, or suites of products, you know? So I, I think like, I still do that, but, but I think that cycle is not hourly. It's, you know, uh, whatever weekly or daily or whatever, you know? So I think that's like the, 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 the blood is still flowing, but the pulse is not frantic. Maybe it would be the best way to put it, you know? Um, that's a good so, point. so that's good. Uh, and like the third thing is just, you know, I've, I realized I, I blogged about it, but I, I've kind of lost my publish button. I think that was sort that's of like right. two weeks in, I realized like, Oh, wow. Wow. Cause, cause you know, I don't know. I, Parabell and Lero and other know, things, yeah. whatever, if I'm not doing anything on Saturday night, I can push code, you know, and just send yeah. it to production, you know, um, didn't really do that for fun, but you know, is, but like I could, you know, or multiple deploys a day or whatever, you know, um, but at Microsoft, it doesn't work that way. And for good reason, because it's yeah. security is a number one concern, you know, but, it, but I think it's all just about like, uh, just how do you, you know, how do you feel productive, you know, or go from a high velocity publishing or pressing publish release yeah. vibe to like, you know, to like, okay, this may take a while. You know, I think my first PR sat in limbo for like a week and, that, and that's, you know, oh, wow. what it is, you know, it's not the mission critical, but it's just, yeah. you know, like, how do you, there's a psyche thing to it. Right. And so I think you yeah, just have slow. to, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think you just have to be comfortable with like a, slower more intentional pace you know um you know I, I think like you know I, I think it's just a very i think it's healthy would probably be the answer you know I, I think like joining a big company i was like oh they have like health benefits and things this yeah. is that's wild interesting you know oh, so retirement matching no way what this is weird <laughs> so, so i think there's just you know I, I think just it's healthy it's more intentional so um i, I think that's good and, and you know secure accessible and you have a lot of smart people oh, looking at it to to make sure it's good you know and so i think that's the the code reviews are a little tougher because it's not just me about that getting merged yeah. you know so yeah. well, it's great well so. you're also used to working out in the open you know you have lots of open source projects you've had popular ones even where you know people are filing issues and whatnot like is that does working with Microsoft feel different in terms of getting that same level of feedback or that you would get out in the open source or maybe from your own colleagues at Paravel? Um, yeah, I think it's different. I mean, I, I think it's, it's always different when you're, you're like working with people and versus like the fly by night GitHub thing, you know, I mean, I have benefited from having open source projects and they've benefited other people, but like, getting a why won't you fix this is this project dead on saturday is just a wreck a weekend wrecker you know and so you're just like yeah. you're like i listen man if you're still <laughs> i understand you want to use jquery with npm but i don't know man what what, what do you got going on you know it's uh on saturday night <laughs> yeah do we need you really still want bauer okay man i don't know but uh of course why not still works um, huh? but, uh, oh um you know just before the the hours up here um i i just want to take a moment you know just to say like 
like thank you for everything that you that that you do in the community, not just on the open source side of things, but like what are you coming up on like fifteen years of shop talk show or something like that? Um, yeah, which... I think we're in our uh, what are we, Chris? You're in chat. I think we're um, on year thirteen or something like that. So yeah, um, it's been going good. So we're at like six forty ish in episodes and um, just been trucking. You know, I don't think we want to quit at, yet, so that's good um have a lot to talk about i always you know it's like i'll, I'll keep doing it well as long as i'm making websites so uh, it's yeah. it's also turned into this like i get to talk to chris for an hour a week and that's fun because yes. he's my buddy so that's good oh, that's that's pretty cool and yeah. um and in that sense too like like i mean that is a resource in and of itself is just hearing people chat about web development i mean i don't know about other folks but i'm like I work, you know, in a pretty isolated, you know, um, you know, environment, and I don't know. It's so fun just to put on a couple of voices that I'm, and I mean, yes, at one point five speed. So, so right now you sound very deep to me. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> a little dealing with a little sick, but um, but yeah, it, no, it is funny. Like, uh, uh, I hear, I listen to podcasts at two x, you know, and then I'll yeah, hear yeah. like West Boss or somebody talk in real at one x, and I'm like dude, what happened to this guy? He, like, <laughs> like, like, you're very white. What happened? Dude, like, we're, we're like, is he okay? Is he like, is he like, like what happened? I, I just, it just, you know, it's funny. Like uh, people almost sound less intelligent. Maybe that's, maybe I shouldn't give away the secret, but it's, it's all, it's like, wow, he's so snappy and witty, you know, true. at, at 1.5 and 2X. And then, uh, and then, uh, and then you go to one X and you're like, Oh, he's, they're just a normal person. <laughs> so oh, yeah. like, they have they're, gaps they're in just, conversation. Yeah, they're, they're just not taking sure time what... to think about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, no. and that, even when I listen to myself and what, if I listen to this or whatever, I'm like, yeah. man, I, it felt like time was zipping, you know, but then, yeah, yeah. You know, but then I listen and uh, I'm talking. Like <laughs> You're like, I'm basically cr like crawling in quicksand here. Like, like, can I be snappier? No, I feel like I, I'm pretty snappy talker. But then, are. but then I, well, but then I like listen to myself and I'm like, Ugh, man, 600 well, episodes. You think I'd be used to it, right? But it's not. Huh? I would think so. But you just get more and more insecure about it. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, oh, I want to um, see a hypnotist to get rid of all my likes and ums. You know, I think that's I'm gonna I'm gonna figure that out. Oh gosh, if you can throw in a little stutter in there for me too, that would be fantastic. Just get, just, uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll see if that they can do. I'll see how well it goes. Yeah. Oh yeah, please do. I would really appreciate that. Um, and that's you know bringing this up on time. Um, I just like thank you again for just hanging out. I you know this the couple of times we've gotten to like hang out in a hallway during a conference or just you know you know walk you know and chat about you know things out, outside of work and dev and all that like i've really enjoyed it and i was really looking forward to to talking with you here and now i'm disappointed because it wasn't as cool as i thought it was going to be no it was really great and <laughs> and um yeah you know just again thank you for everything that you're doing around here and for those who don't know you know shop talk it, it comes on is it is it still weekly Weekly, uh, usually comes out every Monday morning. So um, we're working hard to keep that streak alive. So uh, I don't, I think we've maybe missed one episode ever. So, and then a few. One like, episode ever? Well, and then a few scuffed episodes, like like the track broke or whatever. So um, a couple oh, of those. So. The the dog ate it sort of a thing. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Yeah. Or <laughs> one was. Uh, all that stuff I said, my company reviewed it and I can't say it. <laughs> so oh, good luck. Yeah, that one's a, that one's a surprise. So you're like, cool. <laughs> we can have a well, short turnaround. It's all just redacted, right? Yeah. Um, no. That's uh goes out to hero. Chris ends, uh, who is, uh, yeah. The, the hero editor. Shout out to Chris. So, yeah. Absolutely. And, and also I just want to, want to put Luro app out there again, you know, Luro app.com. Like when you demoed it me over at, uh, I, it was one of the last, hey, um, last uh, days. you know, yeah, it was fantastic. Uh, you know, it's still available out there. You've done, you know, incredible work on it. And I think, you know, it's worth, it's worth a check out at the very least. Um, you know, if you run teams and, and there's like, you know, like shared work across discipline and stuff like this. This is the kind of invaluable tool that you would want to, you know, bridge design talk with development talk. Um, yeah, I think it's a tool for cool. design engineers. And if you find yourself 
in that camp, I, I check it out. So uh, let, let me know. Let me know if it's good. Uh, yeah, whatever. So whatever. Well, that's uh, that's a wrap for this smashing. Uh, what, what do we call this? Smashing hour? Smashing, smashing hour or something like that? Yeah, maybe. Maybe Jaron here can get in, uh, can keep us on on script yeah, here. Yeah, no, smashing hour. Uh, mm. Thanks, thanks so much, boys, for uh, uh, for for hanging out. It was it was a a good chat. Um, yeah. And and uh, and thanks so much. I hope to see you in person soon-ish. Uh, um, I hope so. Both My of gosh. you um, yeah. on 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 the smashing news. Um, um, uh, no more tickets for Freiburg. We just sold out today. Yay! Very happy with that. Yay. Um, um, but there are still tickets for um, uh, New York and uh, and Antwerp, um, and and obviously um, uh, lots of other stuff around. Um, but again, thanks so much for uh, for both your time, and uh, and and see you around. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.